Today we are together here to understand the concept of Scrum better. Scrum is a concept which has accelerated the way the projects are managed. It has led to an exemplary expediting of projects across the board, be it IT or non-IT. Today I want to explain some of the fundamental principles of Scrum when why is it so popular with very meaningful reasons. There has been a certain problem with conventional project planning since millenniums. Conventional projects want to plan everything in one go. So what happens is that right at the beginning, we do is an entire planning for the all phases of the project with certain very strong assumptions, unfortunately, which do not go right many, many times. To be honest, it has been a human problem since thousands of years. We call it certain biases. The first one amongst them is cognitive bias. That's a bias which makes us be optimistic and hence underestimate the complexity and obviously the duration of the project. In reality, the problems we encounter are much more than what we have planned for and hence the projects typically go into a delay or a skid. The second bias is called sunk cost or status quo bias. This malady, unfortunately, makes us afflicted to the project in which we have already sunk a fair amount of resourcing, cost, timeline. Time and again, it has been shown that humans tend to stick to salvage the same plan again and hence end up investing incrementally more money and resourcing on the same. So these are the fundamental issues with any conventional project. And that's where Scrum comes up. Scrum is actually pretty cool. Ask me how. Scrum, first of all, plans to do all planning on the go, which means it does not fixate all planning right in the beginning. We do a small planning, we execute that, and as per the reality perspective, we keep on replanning. And that's how we slowly flower the planning and the execution model better. It's not a surprise that whether it's Google, Salesforce, Amazon, and everybody is using Scrum. And not just for IT, even for all kinds of non-IT works, be it rocket building, journalism, running a payroll, Scrum is everywhere. The fundamental principle behind Scrums are like this. First is the number of people dedicated to it. Typically, it's a bunch of three to nine people. The reason for taking a small group of people is that we don't have a lot of thought processes going everywhere. These people are able to plan and estimate the needful, as I said, on the go. First step, whatever are the user requirements, we first bring them together into something called a product backlog. It's just a sequential arrangement of multiple user requirements that we have. And that is actually done by a very diligent role called product owner. Someone who has been associated with the business, who has been associated with the users, who knows the depth of the, and the nature of the problems and hence is able to prioritize the requirements accordingly. So the requirement, the solution to which gives us a terrific revenue or a direct customer value goes straight at the top and is the most prioritized item to be implemented later. Typically, we in estimation, we don't follow an absolute numbers. We rather follow a Fibonacci sequence, which uses the relative terms, which means according to the judgment and the experiential curve of those three to nine people which are bound together to deliver this project, we take an estimate of what could be the most hardest item in the entire sequence and we give it a number. This number is the cumulative judgment of the amount of man hours or man days that need to be dedicated to implement that thing. Once we are able to complete that, we accord the estimation for the rest of the requirements relative to the hardest one. And that brings us to the next level of planning. And that is called sprint. So during sprint, we actually do the execution, which means we plan the sprint in terms of how many number of story points we can execute typically in a two week module. So in a two week module, and of course, as I can, you can understand, it's more of an educated guess that how many story points can be delivered. For example, we plan to deliver 108 story points and we end up delivering 96. That becomes an educated guess to plan for the next sprint cycle. 
The fourth principle here is of visibility. Everybody in the team should know what is being done and what is left. So we create a whiteboard called Scrum Board where we create three columns. What is to be done, what is being done and what is already done. So we first accumulate all the prioritized backlog items in the first column and they keep slowly shifting from to be done to being done to eventually done itself. This kind of an update is done and the results are captured in a special metrics called burn down, which means how much objects we are able to complete and deliver as well. So that's how the metrics keeps progressing. The fifth principle here is that of a daily scrum meeting, which all the team members do for just 15 minutes every day, just to share and care, to showcase what I've been doing yesterday, what challenges I encounter, how did I mitigate them, or what additional support I need from any of the team members to overcome the challenge. This creates a cycle of high interdependency, but along with it, a high support perspective as well. With this kind of a framework, the team is able to obviously do much better. The sixth principle is that of feedbacks. After the object is completed, the team reaches out to the end users, make them go through a certain usage of that functionality. The user uses the functionality or the process step, what has been newly designed and gives a feedback. If that is good to go, that's fine. If it entails some more work, that requirement is further captured into a backlog item for the next subsequent sprint cycle. So that is where we don't leave any cord untapped. So all the ends are made to meet and entwine with each other. And hence, block after block, the entire object keeps getting better and keeps evolving. The last principle of this thing is called retrospective, where all the team members sit together after the entire project is completed to take a general feedback about how did they fare, how did it go, what went well, what didn't go so well, to create a short snippet of success and failures from it. They learn from the failures and incorporate that into the next sprint design. So it's obvious that the entire team is evolving and any path which leads to an evolution obviously tends to get better and hence the outcomes are keep getting better with the passage of time. This is what is the magic of Scrum. Thank you.